Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode here at the DeHart House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty podcast here on YouTube. Uh, thank you for joining me today, whatever day it is you're joining me uh, here on the channel. And thank you to all of the new subscribers. Uh, we have now exceeded 300 subscribers, which is kind of a big deal on my little channel here on YouTube. So thank you so much for clicking that subscribe button. It really means a lot. Um, we are going to have another giveaway announcement because I'm recording this in the last day of November, November 30th, 2021. So I'm going to take you through the things I've crafted this month, things I've started crafting but haven't finished. <laughs> And also plans for December. December is notoriously Advent month. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm going to commit to daily videos. Actually, let's be honest. I'm not going to post daily videos on the channel for December uh, for a couple of reasons. One, that's a lot of work. And two, that's a lot of videos for you to watch. Yeah. Um, so I think what I'll do instead is record a little bit each day because I do have some plans, but post them at the end of each week. So that way there will be weekly videos, which is more content than usual, but not overload where there are videos every day. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> So all the excuses, <laughs> they're good excuses though. So um, we do have a lot of new subscribers to the channel. So I feel like I'm going to give a little bit of background here, but I should probably post a new video reintroducing myself to our newcomers. So I should put that on my plate to, to create that. Uh, but just to give a little background, I am a college math professor by day, crafter by any other time of the day other than work hours. <laughs> um, but I just turned in my final set of documents uh, in order to earn tenure. So I teach at a community college. Uh, there's a three-year tenure process, uh, which involves a lot of evaluations, um, joining committees, kind of proving your worth, and writing about it, which was, it, it was a lot. Um, I thought it was a lot. Anyway, so I turned in my third year documents right before Thanksgiving here in the U.S. And yeah, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so I spent uh, the, the majority of this month spending a lot of my free time writing and editing and writing and editing. Uh, meeting with my uh, support committee to help me write and edit <laughs> and talk about things. So, yeah, I'm I'm waiting for the letter that says I've earned tenure. Uh, that should come, I believe, in December. We will see. I mean, it will arrive when it arrives, right? Uh, so now it's just a waiting game. But yeah, that's kind of a big deal because uh, you either earn tenure and stay or you don't and you leave. So yeah, I kind of had to put that on the front burner and not the back burner, uh, which makes sense. So yeah, all that to, to preface the fact that I haven't been able to craft as much as I've wanted to. Um, I had to dedicate time to finishing up that packet. And also I was just really stressed out about the whole thing. I still kind of am because I'm waiting, <laughs> but <laughs> certainly not as stressed because there's nothing for me to do at this point. I just have to wait until I hear back. Um, I'm confident that 
I will earn tenure and, and that whole phase will be over with. But, you know, I, I you never know. So it's a waiting game. But anyway, I'm trying to achieve more, more balance, less stress, um, kind of, I feel like that's a lifelong battle that we all deal with, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have finished um, just a couple of things in the month of November. Um, one of them was a new cast on. Um, I'm trying to work through my stash. Uh, it's really easy to bring things into the stash. Uh, but I'm trying to use things out of the stash. So I went diving into diving. <laughs> I went into one of the baskets that I keep um, kind of unique one-off yarns that aren't for a sweater or socks, things that um, either require um, a, a group of similar yarns or socks, which I knit quite often. Those yarns I have out on display on the shelves, but some of the more, um, I do go clearance bin shopping and I'll buy clearance yarn that I wouldn't buy at regular price, either because I don't know how, what to use it for, or it's um, different uh, yarn than I that I've than I've used before, or, or whatever. Right, um, a large quantity I don't know what to do with, but hey, it's on sale. It's a good deal. Why not get it and do figure out something to do with it? Is kind of my uh, mantra there. So <laughs> I bought. On clearance um, some eyelash yarn um, here we go um, this is one of my favorite bags um, that I've made I definitely want to get more of this fabric and create some more bags to put in the shop but <laughs> sewing is something I want to get back into <laughs> sewing bags anyway so it is eyelash yarn so it's on this um, is this knit kind of looks like a like a crochet chain there and then you know all these strands hanging off like eyelashes so here's one um, that looks very eyelash like and then this other skein here which is a little more fuzzy but they were the same brand just different colors. So one is a gray and the other one's like a really light pink, like a peachy kind of color. And I thought, oh, they're, they're different, but similar enough. That's kind of neat. So I used, um, the two, the two colors together and you can see I have a bit more left of the, uh, pinkish hue than the gray that's okay so i this is my first time working with eyelash yarn of, of any kind of fiber um this is all i think polyester i don't know i lost the tags um, but um it's definitely a man-made fiber the two skeins do feel different one is softer than the other which is bizarre but okay um I use size 11 knitting needles and I just knit a scarf because this fuzzy fuzzy yarn is really hard to see on the needles uh, it's hard to see where the stitches are with all that fluff and I knew there was no there's no way a pattern is gonna show up um, knit stitches, purl stitches, cables, none of that is going to show up behind all of this fluffy, fuzzy goodness. <laughs> so I just did garter stitch, uh, back and forth in rows. Um, I mean, you can't tell at all. It just, right? So, <laughs> so yeah, it's a really long scarf and I love it. It's so fluffy. Um, I think this is gonna be 
like the coziest thing to wear this winter. Um, so I used those two colors. So I started with the gray and I just went all gray for a while up until here. So to here. Yeah, yeah, good distance. And then I went in the more pinkish hue. Maybe you can see the color difference here. And then I did a pinkish hue for the same length. So I just kept folding this over <laughs> where I changed colors to measure. So those two color blocks are the same length. And then I decided I'd do a section of striping. And this is only half as long as the other, actually, I'm trying to see if I can catch the light in a way that you can see the stripes. It's hard to see because the colors are so similar. Haha, -ha. right? Yeah, the colors are super similar, so the stripes are subtle, which is what I wanted, but it's really difficult to capture on screen. You can see it in person pretty well. But anyway, oh, yeah, so this is finished. This took me like a week. It was pretty, pretty simple. Um, just knitting back and forth. The only difficult part about it was that the stitches were really hard to see on the needles. Um, if I had bigger needles, I probably would have used them to be honest. But yeah, I went with you a size 11s. It's the largest in my interchangeable needle set. So I just went with that. Um, I mean, could I stick my finger through this fabric? Well, maybe not my thumb. <laughs> I guess it's harder than I thought. But yes, I can stick my finger through the fabric if I really want to. Um, but I'm not worried about it. This is not for a, a small child. Um, this is going to be for me to wear or or guests when they come to visit. If it's cold outside, I just have a, a fluffy scarf laying around, which is pretty nice. So that is a finished object. The only finished knit object this month was this scarf. Yeah. So my goal was to use up just all of that yarn. I was just going to knit until I didn't have any more left, but that scarf is already really long and had quite a bit left of that uh, peachy pink color. And I just, yeah, the, the scarf is a good length, so I stopped. So I still have some eyelash yarn left over. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I, I don't know. We'll, well, I'll find a use for it, I'm sure. Uh, maybe in some weaving. That could be interesting. So if you've weaved with eyelash yarn before, um, do you have any tips or tricks you could share with me to make that manageable? Because with knitting, definitely going up large, large needle sizes helped me to be able to see the stitches better. Um, so if you have any tips on weaving with eyelash yarn, I'd love to hear about them in the comments down below. Um, so my other finished object, I think I pretty much just have one other, is spinning. Um, <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, this was in progress in October. Um, I had finished, did I finish one of these? No, I didn't. Uh, so I had started this spinning project in October. I did finish it in November. Um, this is fiber from... Uh, I've got it written on my tags here. This is from Wild Wool Farms, which I'll have linked down below in the description box. This is on the Panda Base, which is 60% superwash merino, 30% bamboo, and 10% nylon. Um, I bought this uh, off of Facebook. Uh, Wild Wool Farms has a Facebook group. Um, Arlene posts, I think it's Arlene posts um 
quite regularly over there. Uh, things for sale, bats, braids, all kinds of things. So um, yeah, I bought this off of Facebook and I spun this uh, with the intention of knitting socks. And yeah, yeah, we got it. So it did come out to be a fingering weight yarn like I wanted. Um, it's blues and browns and absolutely beautiful. I have another braid uh, in more of the yellow tones um, that I want to spin up also for socks. So my intention is that these will be socks for Michael, my husband, and then the more yellow braid will be socks for me. So <laughs> yes, I love it. It's amazing. It's so pretty. I get it to focus. Yeah. Maybe I'll have to put in some other video of this or pictures or something because it's just not coming across in the lighting. It's a um, very cloudy day here in the Pacific Northwest. It's raining outside. So I don't have great um, sunlight to work with today for recording, but it's the last day of the month and that's when I record these. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I should tell you yardage. Um, so I have an Ashford traditional spinning wheel, which is what I spun this on. The bobbins um, cannot hold four ounces of yarn. Uh, so I, I split it in half um, because the bobbins can accommodate half of that. So one of these uh, skeins is 250 yards uh, at 2.3 ounces. And then the other one is, thank goodness for tags, 230 yards at 2.1 ounces. So, yeah, I have, what, 400, 480 yards to work with here, which is plenty of fingering weight yarn for a pair of socks. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It was a super easy spin. Um, the drafting was beautiful, so the fiber was not super condensed. It was not felted. It was very easy to work with, so I would highly recommend Wild Wool Farms um, fiber for any of you spinners out there. It was beautiful. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, I did also do a little bit of a spinning experiment. So I have this uh, wool that I bought last year. <laughs> last year, I think. Yeah, in 2020. Uh, it was early 2020, so we were still in the home we were renting. Um, and I just put it in a closet and didn't get to it. Till we moved here <laughs> and this summer I washed it and I've been playing around with it so it's Carrie Hill fiber uh, from Carrie Hill sheep and I washed it and I've been combing it and carding it like cleaning it up basically prepping it so um and then I dyed little bits of it in autumnal color so gray and orange brown yellow um even left in some natural weight in there. So what I wanted to do was compare preparation and spinning. Um, so they are different colors, but that's not, that's just so I can tell them apart, but <laughs> the, the colors themselves have nothing to do with the experiment. Um, so this more grayish one I used, up uh, knitting that pumpkin last month and this I prepared on my my blending board and I rolled off the fiber into Rolex and I spun this from Rolex this I put the fiber on the blending board and I took it off using a Diz to make roving so this is a woolen prep and this is a worsted prep. So fibers going every which way, fibers pretty much lined up. Okay. 
So the comparison is that I do love the worsted prep a lot more because it looks so much cleaner. Now, again, the colors are different, but try to ignore the colors. Um, there's no big halo. There's a very little halo. Um, the barber pulling is easy to see. Uh, it's just quite beautiful. Actually, let me switch the camera. And, and let me let me do that. Let me switch the camera and show you my spinning because then I can actually get it to focus on the strands instead of my face. Okay, so here's my hand spun um, from the panda base. Oh yeah, see you can see that. See, look how nice that is. The blues and the browns. Lots of barber pulling. I love it. I did spin this up on two two separate plies and then plied them together. I split the fiber. Um, so there's the big long strip of roving. I split it in half to make the two different skeins. And then on each of those halves, I split it in half this way for the two different plies. So I did not strip it down the middle. I cut it in half. So I wouldn't be getting the same colors lining up. I wanted the different colors, brown against blue. And that's pretty much what I got, which is what I wanted. It's really good. Um, but yeah, so there's that. And then there's this spinning I wanted to talk about. So let me come in here a little closer. There we go. So this one is the woolen prep. So you can see it is a bit fuzzy. Can you see that fuzzy edge around there? Um, the Now again, try to ignore the color difference here. <laughs> but um, see like here with the barber pulling with the yellow and the gray. See how fuzzy that is? And here with the orange and gray. It's just not as clean and tidy as I would want it to be. I'm trying to find a good example. Yeah. Anyway, it's just, it's very fuzzy, which is what woolen does, right? Is it uh, keeps the fibers going all different directions, which traps the air, and it's it's fuzzy, right? Okay. This is the worsted prep. So having all the fibers lining up facing the same way. And you can see there's a lot less fuzziness to the yarn. Um, and the, the barber pulling here where the two plies are different colors coming together. It's just real clean and crisp, which is nice. See that? It's beautiful. Um, now you through the screen cannot feel the fiber but I can feel the fiber and I do like the way the worsted prep feels because it does feel smoother um, than this this feels fuzzier now none of these feel scratchy to me let me just say um, I think this is very soft yarn I would be happy with it against my face either way but I prefer this one a little bit more just because it's smoother versus fuzzier. Um, so I like both preps and I think they have their places. Um, I think if I was going to make a sweater out of this, which I would love to, I think I'd go with the worsted prep. Just because the yarn, uh, I like the way this yarn looks as opposed to this one. But it, it would depend on the pattern and the look of it. So Anyway, I just ran a little experiment. I just wanted to compare uh, because I've mostly spun with merino type yarn and Carrie Hill is different. So I wanted to see, okay, so on a longer stable fiber, what is that like? Um, and yeah, I love both of these. And I'm really glad I did a little test because I can definitely see differences and feel differences, which is super fun. 
so yeah I had I had fun with some spinning <laughs> this this month um some things I still have in progress um, since we're on the topic of spinning I got out my Turkish drop spindle and I don't know I was just having trouble picking out something to work on so I have more of this green and the last time I finished uh, an ounce of this I said I was really sick of just plain green and I wanted something more exciting and I was having decision fatigue trying to just figure out what to do and I just wanted to do something on my drop spindle so I picked up more of this green <laughs> so I bought four ounces of this green I have spun up two ounces of it already I still have two more ounces so this is one of those ounces so I still have yep there it is I still have one more ounce on the shelf but yep so I picked this up it's just nice to um, just have something really easy uh, to, to put on the drop spindle this is 100% merino um, just in green just real simple um, Yep, so I have that going, and then um, my sister uh, put in a request for Christmas to knit a gift for a friend, which is always a big compliment when someone asks you to make something, so really appreciate that. So I made a gift for my nephew a number of years ago, back when I lived in Texas, and I knit him a, a hood like a like a balaclava um, but basically it, uh, it covers the neck and comes up as a hood um, and I put spikes on it so it looked like a dinosaur and I'll put in a picture over here <laughs> of that um, I didn't take a lot of pictures or take really any notes when I created this I was kind of new to Ravelry and and podcasting and so I don't have a lot of documentation on what I did so I'm trying to recreate this uh, in different colors so we're gonna do a green base this time with orange spikes which is super fun so I'm knitting it bottom up I've got the little bit of ribbing down here which I don't think I did on the original I think I went with a rolled edge but I'm not a fan of rolled edges, I found out. So, so a little bit of ribbing here to keep help keep it flat. Um, we're coming up the neck, and then I'll separate soon uh, for the hood, uh, and then and knit, knit flat up that way. So, yes, I need to get a move on with this for sure because this is meant to be a Christmas present for someone. So. I need to get this done and shipped down to my sister, excuse me, so that she can gift that to the recipient. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. For Just kidding, I have one more in progress knitting <laughs> in this sweater bag here, uh, and that is a sweater. So I mentioned last time uh, that I, of course, I'm in the middle of a row, <laughs> uh, but I picked out a sweater pattern and the yarn and did all these substitutes and knit ac an actual swatch that I washed <laughs> and all that stuff. So I did actually cast it on and my progress is quite pitiful. Um, yeah. So if you follow me on Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> You've been seeing some pictures of this, and it is a very slow growing sweater. Yes, this is about three inches, maybe four inches here. Uh, yeah, and I'm in the middle of a row, so I can't really extend this out too much. Uh, but it is knit flat and from the bottom up. So this is the bottom edge and oh my gosh look at how awesome that this, this yarn combination is turning out <laughs> so 
So the sweater pattern is called Mellow and it's by Camilla Vaught and I bought this on Ravelry, the pattern. Uh, so it is a paid for pattern. I'm not going to give away any of the secrets. Uh, oh yes, here's my swatch where I tried the yarns in different um, different orders to see how the colors would play, if that would change anything. And it does. It does. <laughs> uh, the yarns are... Um, two of them are Knit Picks Palette in the colors Ash and Mist. So these are the two grays, light and dark gray. And then this is like a bluish gray. This is a lace weight yarn, um, scrumptious lace. And the color is water. Um, yeah, so I love how this color combination is turning out. I think it looks really interesting. Um, yeah, I think it's going to work. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's slow going. Like I said, I, I had a lot going on this month. Um, I'm also making a separate video about this sweater. Mainly my process of actually planning out projects and being intentional about things instead of just knitting things on a whim. You know, I, I do love knitting things on a whim. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I did cast on a sweater. I did not pick up my old work in progress, my color work sweater. Um, I, I felt like I wanted something fresh and new to distract me but not distract me so much I couldn't get my stuff turned in. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I did start it. I did make a little bit of progress. I definitely want to finish it sometime soon, next couple months. Probably not December, but it'd be nice to finish in January. I think that would be nice. So plans for December with Advent season. <laughs> <laughs> so I did purchase the new uh, Imagined Landscapes Gnome Mystery Knit Along for Advent this year. Uh, I did do it last year and I found it really fun. Uh, I'm not big into mystery knit alongs because I want to know what I'm making. <laughs> the mystery part isn't always my favorite. Uh, but for a little gnome figurine that's going to sit on a shelf, I can deal with that mystery knit sweater mm, mm, I'm still not down with that <laughs> uh, but yeah so I'm going to be participating in that this year and then something I wanted to do last year but I never really got around to that I want to try this year is uh, some advent weaving so <laughs> yeah because I need one more thing to do right um, yeah, so, uh, something I need to get done, uh, today, tomorrow at the latest, so I can get started, <laughs> is, uh, putting the warp on my loom. Loom? Yeah, it's a loom. I don't know why. It felt weird to say that word just then. Maybe because I don't weave that often, so, anyway... <laughs> So I have a, a pegboard over here with um, scraps of yarn on it. And I'll switch the camera over so you can see it, actually. There it is. There's my pegboard with uh, yarn on it. So I have, I actually bought more pegs so I could hang up more stuff. So I've got, uh, here's yarn that I have dyed myself. Here is yarn that I have spun. Um, here's more yarn that I've spun right here. <laughs> uh, but all up here are leftover fingering weight yarns from socks and sweaters and all kinds of projects. Uh, and I put them up here in sort of a rainbow and it's just it's just really pretty to look at. And if I need a contrast color for heels or toes, you know, they're all up there for me to see. I can cl clearly see if it's a self-striping yarn or a tonal or a solid. I don't have to dig through baskets and it's just kind of fun. So I went through my pegboard and that was a, a lot more full <laughs> a few days ago. 
Um, and I went through and I took down a bunch of colors uh, to weave with. So I got, I don't even remember how many I picked out. Maybe it is, it's either 24 or 25 different colors. And my thought was to set it up to be like a rainbow. Uh, so it's not going to be a random, open a random envelope, get a random color for weaving with. I do want to have some kind of design control <laughs> uh, over the project. Uh, but these are all scraps. These are all things that are just sitting around waiting to get used as an accent or something in a project. Um, and I thought, you know, what? why not? I've been wanting to do this for a while, like weave a big scarf out of some leftovers. So that's what I'm going to do in December. So um, because the order matters and I didn't want to use up a whole bunch of Ziplocs or paper bags or things, um, I, f I lined them all up on my window ledge here. So let me show you my, uh, the scraps of yarn I've set aside. So there aren't really any big spoilers here. I'll probably take you through the yarns in the videos, but I've lined them all up here on the window ledge. <laughs> I guess I just needed a big, long space, and there's such little balls of yarn that it, that it works out just fine. So I've got them all lined up here to go through um, in December. So what I need to do today or tomorrow is get, I need to pick a nice neutral color to put on my warp, on my loom. Uh, so either white, gray, or black. Um, and just get it on there ready to go. So December 1st, I can start with the first color, which by the way, tomorrow is December 1st. Can you believe that? Um, and I can go ahead and do the weaving. So what I need to do is figure out how long I want the scarf to be, because that's going to dictate my warp, uh, but also give me an idea of how much to weave with each color. Um, does it need to be, you know, X number of inches, right? So if I take the length, divide it by how many colors I have, it's going to tell me how many inches to weave with each color. Um, some of the scraps are smaller than others, so if I can't get the full X amount of inches, then I'll need to be able to adapt to that. Not a big deal. Um, something I'll have to keep in mind. So so I'll have a couple of things going for Advent. I'll have the gnome mystery knit along and I'll have the weaving, which should be fun. So my hope is to do some videos of those things each day in December and then post a compilation of the week, the end of the week. Um, so there will be four videos instead of 31 videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or 25. Does Blogmas only go up to Christmas and then folks stop after that? I don't know. Anyway, so that's my plan. That's my hope. So you've stuck around with me to the end of this video, which is commendable. <laughs> so I need to announce what the giveaway is this month and tell you how to enter. All right, so to enter the giveaway, which is going to run from whenever this video gets posted through December 14th is where you can enter. So for two weeks, um, on December 15th, I will uh, make a post announcing the winner. So to enter, all you need to do is comment below on this video, on the November Makes video, and let me know what it is you are doing for December knitting or crafting. Um, are you doing an Advent? If so, which one? Or, you know, did you buy an Advent calendar? Um, and it doesn't even have to be a crafty Advent calendar. Um, I gave a bunch of Advent calendars to nieces and nephews. None of them are yarn related. <laughs> So, you know, are you doing some kind of advent calendar? 
Um, or do you have some kind of crafting plans for the month of December? Um, are you making gifts? Are you making something for yourself? Are you taking a break? <laughs> um, let me know below down in the comments. So what I will do, uh, so all you have to do is comment below on the prompt and be a subscriber of the channel. That's it. Uh, this is open to anyone in the world. Doesn't matter where you are. Uh, and what you'll win if you are randomly chosen, so I'll randomly choose from the comments, um, what you will win is a holiday themed bag. Holiday, it's Christmas, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> it's very festive. Uh, polar bears in hats and scarves with snowflakes. Um, yes, it is one of my favorite fabrics. I made a little, little bag for myself out of this. And inside is snowflake fabric. So it has a zipper, it has a handle, it is a box bottom so it will fold out. Um, this has been pressed and kept in storage so it's very nice looking, right? Um, and yes, it is one of my bags, so the Hard House Creations. Um, and like I said, I need to get back into bag making again. So <laughs> we're going through my stock here, which is super cool, but uh, I need to add some more. So, uh, so comment down below. What are you doing for December? Any Advent plans? Any gift making plans? Just what are your plans, right, for crafting or not crafting, or Advent or not Advent? And I'll randomly choose a winner, and I will send you this bag in the mail. So, that's it. That's all you have to do. <laughs> Um, just to let everyone know, there were issues with posting links in the comments in last month's giveaway, so I encourage you to not post links because YouTube came through and deleted comments, which was not cool. So, um, maybe don't put in links, but you could put names of, um, like for example, I'm knitting, uh, Imagine Landscapes mystery knit along and I could just type that in the comment but not include a link to the Ravelry page um, and we can search things from from copy paste into whichever search engine you use um, but I don't want any comments to get deleted because while I can kind of dig a bit to find them other folks won't get to and Part of the point of these giveaways with the comments is so that we can all share with each other. So I want, I, I would like everyone to be able to see and share um, ideas of, of what we're doing in December. So anyway, <laughs> that's it. Thanks for sticking around. Um, I look forward to next month. It should be a bright, happy season right? <laughs> um, so I hope you're staying safe, you're staying healthy, and until next time, enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. See you in December to announce the giveaway winner. Bye!